This video was sponsored by Keeps. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this rustic white oak bench. And not only am I gonna show you how I did it, I'm gonna show you how you can do it using just basic wood shop tools. Nothing too fancy in this one. Anyone can build this bench if you watch the video. So do that, watch the video, subscribe down below, check out the video descriptions for links to all the products and things I used, link to my website for merchandise, my Patreon page, go follow me on Instagram, Facebook, whew, and all that other stuff. All right, enjoy the video. Well, here we go. Another classic video where I build something with absolutely no plan or forethought. Why do I do this to myself? So my wife wanted a little bench for our house. I knew I had two sticks of 100 plus year old reclaimed white oak laying around in my shop, and I thought, sure, these'll probably work. They were already plain down on one side and completely rough on the other side. There was one long board that was nice and square and straight with no wobble in it at all. And then there was this board. Wonky, wonky, wonky. I'll have to take care of that. My plan was to use the straight board for the top of the bench and then dice up the wonky board to make the bench legs. That's about all I knew right now. So I took the wonky board over to the chop saw and I cut a piece off that was twice as long as I wanted my legs to be. My plan at this point was to cut that down eventually to create both of my bench legs. But as you can see, it is still really wonky with a nice little twist in it. So I had to take care of that first and get it nice and square. I've got an idea. Normally I just run a board through my joiner and call it good, but this was too wide for the joiner and I didn't have the ability to cut it down. I needed it this wide, so I decided to make a little planer sled. So I took a scrap piece of ply for my stock to sit on, I put a stop at one end and a stop at the other end, making sure to leave about a quarter to an eighth inch gap for that wood to move around. Then I took a couple shims and I stuck one under one corner of my stock to keep it from wobbling. Then I took my other two shims and I inserted them in that eighth to quarter inch gap to hold the piece nice and securely within the confines of my sled. I just tap those shims in with the hammer, tap, 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 and then I broke them off to get them out of the way. Don't want any shims hanging out and ruining your day. As you can see, the piece is now nice and secure, trapped between both of those stops on either end of my plywood sled. I am ready to send it through the planer. Because it's holed securely to the sled and the sled is flat, once I run it through the planer, this will give a perfectly flat surface on the top. Just like this. Well, this is actually after running it through a bunch of times, I just sped it up, you know, for the video. Then I took it over to my bench, popped the shims out, and as you can see, no more wobble. Now all I need to do is take it over and run it through the planer again, this time with the opposite side up to make sure the whole thing is nice and smooth and flat as a pancake. Well, not really that flat, that'd be too thin to work with. While I was running stuff through the planer, I decided this would also be a good time to just go ahead and plane down my bench top. So after getting both pieces planed down, my bench top and my piece I was gonna use for my legs, it was time to start shaping my legs. But first I needed truly square stock to work with. So I ran the piece through the joiner to get a straight edge and then took it over to the table saw to cut it down to its final width. The final width is gonna be just about an inch shy of my overall bench top width. Ooh, there's nothing quite as pretty as a perfectly square board, especially when it didn't start out square. 
Next, I would cut down my pieces into the individual legs, but first I wanted to add a little shape to them in the form of a half circle detail on the bottom of each leg. My plan was to cut this out with a router jig, but first I needed a little waste surface so I didn't cut into my workstation. So I just grabbed my sled and I locked that piece securely back into the planer sled. It was just laying there, so I figured, why not? Once I got it locked in there securely, I went and grabbed my router jig to cut my circle. The only problem is this Rockler router jig, it can only go so small. As you'll see here in just a second, after I get that stupid clamp out of the way, it'll spin around and cut my circle, but it only goes down to that groove, which would make way too big of a circle. I actually need my pivot point much closer, but when in doubt, just drill holes in your tools. So I drilled a hole right where I needed that pivot point, and then I drilled the same hole right in the center of my board, just like this. Then I grabbed a little trim head screw. It's got this nice portion at the top with no threads, and I figured it would be a good place for the jig to spin around on. And I just screwed that right through my jig and into my piece, making sure the jig was only spinning on that little threadless portion. It worked great, so I inserted my router into the jig, and I was ready to cut out a circle. This would be a great time to sing the classic 80s song, you spin me right round, baby, right round. Everybody, like a record, baby. Round, 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 round. Anyways, after making multiple light passes, I was able to successfully cut all the way through my little piece of oak there. With the exception of a little tab that I did not cut through on my last pass. This was just a keep that circle secure. I didn't want to cut all the way through and then have my router start bouncing all over the place. So I just very carefully reached in and broke that tab free. It wasn't too hard. Checked that aside and then I just cleaned up the remnants of that little tag just with a little flush cut bit on my router. Quick and easy. Once I had my circle perfectly cut, I took my full piece over to the chop saw and I cut it right down the center of that circle. This created two separate legs with a perfect half circle detail on the bottom of them. Pretty slick, huh? It's almost like I had a plan. Next, I cut each leg down to its final dimension. Well, almost its final dimension, 19 and a quarter inches. These legs are gonna go all the way through the bench top in the form of a through tenon locked in place with a wedge so I wanted a quarter inch wiggle room that I could trim off later. Speaking of my tenons, it was time to start cutting those. So I got out my table saw sled and I raised my blade up to a quarter of an inch. Then I marked down from the top of my leg an inch and three quarters. My top is an inch and a half, so after my tenon goes through that top, a quarter of an inch will be sticking out that I can trim down when I'm all done. So with my leg all marked out, I set up a stop block on my table saw sled so that I could make repeatable cuts right along that mark. Then I just took the leg and I worked around all four sides, putting a nice quarter of an inch groove, mapping out exactly where my tenon would start and the top of my bench leg would stop, I guess. Anyways. After slowly working around all four sides, I had a perfect quarter inch groove that connected all the way around, looking something like this. Actually, it looked exactly like this. This is, this is the leg. This is what it looked like. See, that's where my tenon will be. Once I did the exact same thing to the other leg, I took my stop block off now this is where I could have inserted a dado stack and just cut all the material with one pass, but my blade was already at the perfect height and I had nowhere to go, so I just made a zillion tiny passes back and forth, removing the rest of the material. Did it take a long time? Yes. Was it the dumb way to do it? Probably. But hey, I got the job done. As you can see, a nice trimmed down tenon at the very top. 
but we're not done yet. I spent another six hours and I did the other leg. No, not really. It honestly only took about maybe 12, 15 minutes. It really wasn't that bad. With both legs trimmed down, I raised the blade to the exact length of that tenon sticking out the top. This was so that we could start removing material and trim that tenon down into two separate tenons. So I set up another stop block about an inch away from the end of my bench leg, and then I grabbed a little quarter inch piece to rest against my fence. This was just to give me a nice secure surface so that the bench leg wouldn't want to tilt outwards. And yeah, I just kept running it back and forth doing small passes. Once I removed all the material on one side, I flipped it over and I did the same thing to the other side. Just like that. See? But we're not quite done yet. Once I got the outside of the tenon cut, I moved my stop block over again and I started cutting the inside removing all the material, creating two separate tenons. So I made a pass on one side, then I flipped the whole thing around, and I made a pass on the other side. This ensured that both my tenons would be exactly the same size. And then I just went crazy, going back and forth and back and forth until I removed all that internal material. Shazam! two separate, perfectly formed tenons, just like this. And then when I got done with one, I did the other, but I'll spare you that back and forth motion. I did have to clean up just a little bit with the chisel, but nothing too major. And the work was quick, easy, and satisfying, as chisel work often is. And before long, I had both of the tenons cut on the top of my bench legs. This video was sponsored by Keeps. Did you know that two out of every three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? I'm 33. It's coming for me. But hands down, the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it before it's too late. If you go to keeps.com, you will find scientifically proven hair loss treatments that will help combat male pattern baldness. And you don't have to go broke to use them. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss treatments on the market. You might have heard of some of these before, but never at these prices. Not only does Keeps have great products, they have revolutionized the way that men are treated for hair loss, making it super simple to get the products delivered right to your door every three months. So you can say goodbye to awkward doctor's visits or pharmacy lines. You just fill out the stuff online, tell them what you need, and it shows up at your door every three months. So if you're ready to take action to prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash bourbon moth or click the link in the video description to get 50% off your first order. That's keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash bourbon moth. Go, sign up today. With the tenons cut on the top of my bench legs, it was time to start marking out and cutting my mortises. I decided to leave a nine inch overhang on each side of my bench. So after measuring in nine inches, I set my bench leg roughly where it needed to go. And then I measured so that it was perfectly centered in my bench top. I should also mention I'm working on the top of the bench. These will be inserted from the bottom, but since they're gonna be visible on the top, this is my show side. So it's the side I wanna spend all my time on making sure it's perfect. So after tracing out my tenons, I went back over with an X-Acto knife to score the top of the bench. This will give me a nice place to rest my chisel. Then I marked each tenon and the corresponding mortise so that I could make sure to get everything lined back up where it needed to. In theory, all the tenons are the exact same size, but I didn't want to leave anything to chance. After marking one side, I moved over and marked the other side the exact same way. Then I grabbed a Forzner bit and I just started removing material as fast as I could. I didn't want to chisel all that crap out. 
Notice the piece of wood on the bottom to prevent blowout as I go all the way through this piece. Then after I had as much drilled out as I could, I set up a little shoulder block to guide my chisel and I let my chisel do its thing. There's something so therapeutic about chisel work. It's just fun to watch those tiny little slices pop off. I just continued to slowly work my way around from mortise to mortise and in no time, I had pretty decent mortises cut out. Not too shabby. So of course I decided to test and see if they'd fit. At this point, I probably should have said, whoa there big guy. Don't hammer it too far in. You don't want to get it stuck. It might be a real pain to get out and you're not ready to glue this thing up yet. Just tap it in a little bit. But I didn't say that to myself and I got it wedged in there. I mean, I really got it wedged in there. On the bright side, my mortises were nice and tight, but man, I could not get this thing out for the life of me. I literally had to get a pry bar and pry it back out of those mortises. Oh. Whew. Uh, not doing that again. No, I probably will. I make dumb mistakes like that all the time. After doing one side, of course I moved over and I did the other side. A little more chisel, a little more tap, chisel, 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 snap, snap, snap. That was, that was the rhyme I made up about chiseling. And then I test fit the other side. This time you'll notice I just tapped it in a little bit, leaving plenty of room for me to pop that sucker back out. Fool me once, am I right? After struggling to get that mortise out and completely wearing myself out, I decided to call it quits and come back with fresh eyes the next morning. But as fresh eyes often do, they convince you to do more work that you hadn't planned on to begin with. After looking at this bench for a while, I decided it just looked a little too plain, and I thought some brace pieces might jazz it up a little bit. So after cutting a little test piece out of plywood, I decided, yep, I think I want to add some brace pieces. Oh jeez, more work. So I milled down some more oak stock from the last little bit of reclaimed oak that I had left, and I cut out some little 45 degree oak pieces. Then to cut out my tenons for these, I just went super simple. I raised my blade up to the correct height. I was giving a one inch tenon on the end of these and I just switched my pieces back and forth and ran them through taking off small little chunks. This might look kind of dangerous, but I assure you I was in complete control of the piece the entire time. And when you think about it, it was really no different than running a piece of wood through with a push stick. I'm just, cutting the actual push stick and I gotta tell you it worked absolutely perfectly in no time at all I had two pieces cut with a nice little quarter inch shoulder on both ends now all I had to do was mark out and cut my actual tenon shape for these they don't need to be nearly as uniformed because we'll be marking each tenon individually and cutting to fit that tenon. So if they're off a little bit here or there it won't matter as long as you cut out your mortise to that size, if that makes any sense at all. So I just marked an inch in from both sides to create a nice sized tenon. I was really just making this up as I went along. You know how I hate math. so. Believe me, I didn't do any. Then after marking out where I wanted my tenon to be, I just went over to the bandsaw and cut out the remaining material, making sure to cut nice straight lines and not go into that shoulder at all. I was able to get a perfect cut actually. I didn't even have to clean this up with the chisel. Not to toot my own horn, but yeah, I'm pretty flippin' awesome. Next, I needed to mark out where my mortises needed to go in my bench leg. So after partly inserting the leg into the bench top, I put a one inch spacer block at the bottom to keep it one inch off of my bench surface. Remember, I got one inch tenons. And then I marked the center of my bench leg and I traced out my tenon. This time I took my legs over to the drill press because these will not be through tenons. They're only going an inch into that bench leg. So I set the stop on my drill press to drill down one inch 
and I removed as much material as I possibly could. And then you guessed it, and it was back over to the shoulder block and more chisel, 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 tap, 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 snap, snap, snap. I don't even think that's right. Darn it, I already forgot my rhyme. Once I cut out my mortise, I did a test fit. And ooh la la, this one slid in absolutely perfect. Tight, but not too tight, but not too loose. Just the way I like it. Then with the tenons on our brace pieces fully inserted in the bench leg, I traced out exactly where that tenon would land on my actual bench top. This is actually the bench bottom. I flipped it over at this point because, you know, it's coming up from the bottom. We don't want to put mortises in the top of our bench. After tracing it out, yeah, I went back over to the drill press and drilled down one inch, again, removing as much material as I could with the drill press to alleviate the amount of chisel work I had to do. And then it was back over to the block. Chisel, 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 tap, tap, tap. Chisel, 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 snap, snap, snap. Was that right? I'm gonna have to go back and listen to this video again. I don't remember. Gosh. Then with both my mortises cut out on the bottom side of my bench, I just did a quick test fit to ensure that those would fit nice and tight. I wanted to seat these all the way in because if that tenon was a bit too long, I wanted to catch it now and not when I was trying to glue up the entire thing. If the tenon was too long, I'd have a horrible gap at the bottom there. So I fit one side and then I went over and I fit the other side. Both of them fit very nicely and yes, I was able to get them back out. I'm glad you asked. At this point, I was very close to being able to glue this whole thing together. There was just a few more things I had to do in preparation. One of them being cutting the slots for my wedges on my through tenons. Before I cut the slots, I drilled a small hole at the base of the tenon where that slot would terminate. I only knew to do this because my friend Keith Johnson told me it was a good idea to catch extra glue and keep the tenon from splitting. He's got an awesome YouTube channel, Keith Johnson Woodworking. If you're not following him, well, you should go do it. He's a much better woodworker than I am. So after drilling my hole, I went over to the bandsaw and I just made a nice thin cut right along my pre-drawn lines. Doing it on one side, flipping it over, doing it on the other side, and then I moved my fence over and I cut the lines in the middle. In hindsight, cutting these on the bandsaw might have made too thin of a slit. I might have been better doing it with a thin curved blade on the table saw, but this did work in the end, so I'm not gonna say you can't do it this way. Heck, go ahead and do it this way. It worked fine. I don't even know why I'm saying that. With my slots cut, there's only one thing left to do, and that was to cut my actual wedges. So I milled down a piece of wood that was the exact same thickness as my tenons, and I'm sure there's some fancy way to cut perfect wedges, but I just went over to the bandsaw and I just eyeballed it, cutting a bunch of nice little wedge-shaped pieces of wood. I mean, a wedge is a wedge, right? At least, I think so. I mean, look, they, they stick in the slot like they're supposed to, so I couldn't have messed it up that bad, could I have? I'm going with it. This is the one and only way to cut wedges. No, not really. And then last but not least, my favorite step. The step I look forward to on every project. The sanding. Oh, how I long for it. Not really. But I will say this. Because we're working with reclaimed wood and we lost a lot of that reclaimed character in milling the wood down. You know, making it perfectly square, straight edges, all that. When I sand reclaimed wood, I like to throw all the typical sanding rules out the window and just go crazy. I mean, spending a lot of time in one spot so you kind of burn down a little hole, really nosing up on the sander to create little grooves and divots. I find that by sanding the edge of reclaimed wood in this wonky, crazy manner, you can bring a milled piece of reclaimed wood back to looking like it should, like a junky old beat up piece of wood, which, is what most people want out of reclaimed stuff. So just let the creativity fly. Just have fun with it. You know, ooh, sending. 
Then with all of our pieces pre-sanded, it was finally time to start gluing this up. Now I had to glue this up in a very specific way to ensure that all my tenons could be put in in the appropriate manner. So the first thing I needed to do was glue my little brace pieces in place. So I just put a very thin coat of glue inside this mortise. Remember it's a nice tight fit, so there's not a lot of extra room for glue to squeeze out or move around. So you just need a little bit. And I didn't even use any clamps. I just smushed it on there and let them sit. I mean, really, I just let them sit for a few hours. I didn't want to try and glue up the rest of the bench while these were still wet and have them moving all over the place. I wanted them nice and solid before I put the whole bench together. But this is a video, so we can fast forward through the whole drying part. Ta-da, they're dry. I removed the tape that I had put down originally to catch any squeeze out, but guess what? There was none, because I didn't use very much glue. And then I was ready to glue the now leg brace combo piece into the bottom of the bench. You'll notice I raised the bench up on two pieces of plywood because my through tenons need room to go all the way through that bench top. After putting again a very light amount of glue on, I set my leg brace combo in place and I grabbed my wacky stick and I started smashing. Now I will say this, whenever I'm trying to seat a tenon into a mortise, if I can, I don't pound it all the way with the mallet. I just don't like doing it. Call me crazy. I like to finish the last little bit with a set of clamps. I think it's a nice smooth transition and I didn't want to blow out the top of my bench. So after clamping it up, I checked to make sure it was square, which it was, and I moved over to the other side. Again, just putting the lightest amount of glue on the inside with a glue brush and then inserting my leg brace combo. Seating it part way with the mallet just until it gets to be a pain to hit and then I finished the rest off with a nice set of clamps. Once they were seated, I removed the clamps and I carried the bench over and set it on the floor. They're nice and secure in there at this point. You don't have to leave the clamps on, trust me. They're not going anywhere. And with that, it was time to insert my wedges. Now you don't need a lot of glue for these either. You're just trying to get a little bit of glue down in that groove to hold the wedge in place. To be completely honest, you don't even actually need glue for this. The wedge and physics and all that jazz will do its work and it'll stay in on its own. But I'm a woodworker and I just can't help adding glue to everything. When seating your wedges, you just want to lightly tap. Don't hammer them home like crazy because you're just going to break your wedges in half or break a tenon. Once those were seated and I let the glue dry for an hour or so, I came back with a flush cut saw and I trimmed them down. I wasn't being too careful with this. I knew I'd scar up the top of the bench, but hey, it's reclaimed wood and I will do a final sanding before I add finish. So I just slowly worked my way around to each through tenon, and in no time they were all trimmed down. Hey, this thing's kind of cool. With all of the tenons trimmed down flush, I pulled back out the sander and I removed all my scars and marks left behind by the flush cut saw. Now, when you're sanding, you're probably going to notice a few little gaps in the top of your through tenons because you're a human and there's no way in heck you can cut them absolutely perfect. So what I like to do is just take some fine oak sawdust and a little glue. I mix it together in my hand because I'm some sort of animal. And then I take that paste and I just smear it in all the little cracks all the way around my through tenon just like this. Then after letting it get good and dry, I pull the sander back out and I sand away all the excess glue. And what should be left behind is what appears to be a perfectly cut tenon, even though you and I both know that's not the case. Then after doing that to all my through tenons, I gave it a once over one more time with the sander just to make sure everything was nice and peachy. To finish this bench, I am of course using Rubio Monocoat Cotton White because it's oak, 
and that seems to be the only thing I know how to put on white oak. It was also at this time that I realized I probably should have pre-finished all these pieces before hooking it together. It would have made my life much, much easier, but I just went slow and in the end I was able to get finish in all the little nooks and crannies and under my brace piece. Once I got the bottom all coated in finish, I flipped it over and started smearing finish on the top. I was pretty pleased with the outcome. Not too bad for two boards and two days of work. Hopefully, my wife will love it. Oh, <laughs> hey, well there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you learned something new. And now, I hope you go build yourself a bench. I'm just gonna sit here for a while and uh, relax. If you want to sit for a while and relax, maybe you can relax and watch another one of my videos. Just an idea. Oh, subscribe down below. You can subscribe now. It's a good time.